Good morning, Andrew Douglas here on the Action News 5 Digital Desk. It is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and most people out there are thinking about holiday travel. They're thinking about the Thanksgiving Day feast. They're thinking about leftovers. Maybe they're thinking about the nap after the Thanksgiving feast. Well, when it comes to food, there's only one person to turn to. It is a person who talks to us about everything from breweries to breakfast, patios to new places to eat in Memphis and the Mid-South. I'm talking about the commercial appeals food reporter Jennifer Chandler joining us once again. Jennifer, happy Thanksgiving. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, if someone told me the other day that um, for me, this is like the Super Bowl of the dinner table <laughs> this week. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. If, if, it, if you're anything like if your household is anything like mine, we've been cooking now for several days. Uh, I can only yeah. imagine what it's like at your house. How's it going so far? It's going so well so far. I, um, my husband and I just celebrated our 25th anniversary, so we actually went out of town for a long weekend. So we didn't get back till late Monday night. So um, mm -hmm. I have to admit, I did spend about six hours in the kitchen yesterday, last night, <laughs> getting um, things ready. But I had done my, taken my own tip, and I always buy my non-perishables about a week or two in advance, so that I already have those, and it saves me a trip to the grocery store. So but we're in full swing such, here. <laughs> such a great tip, absolutely. By the way, happy anniversary, 25 years. That's Thank a special you. one. Um, yeah. So, so you're so, talking about reheating tips for uh, yes, take and bake holiday yes. dishes. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so oh, here's what we're gonna talk about first is side dishes. So, um, you know, this is a shortcut that a lot of us take is that we pick up a dish or two from someplace that we love, whether it's a restaurant or a prepared food shop. And so this year I sat down with curbside casserole owner, um, Bradford Williams, and she had some excellent tips that she shared um, for how to get those side dishes on the table, um, all warm at the same time and looking delicious. and. Um, to be honest, what I always tell people is, um, don't tell anybody you didn't slave all day in the kitchen. Make it look like it's your own. So here's how you do that. So the first thing, if you have not already transferred, if the things came frozen, if you have not already transferred them to your refrigerator, stop what you're doing right now and go throw them in the refrigerator. Most side dishes will take um, a day or two to thaw safely in the refrigerator. But when you're thawing them, sometimes they leak. So Bradford had a great tip that she said to put a towel, paper towel or regular towel underneath the container in your fridge so that if anything leaks, it doesn't get all over your fridge. I take it one step further and I actually have some small baking trays, you know, cookie sheets, and I put the side dishes lined with um, paper towels on the cookie sheet inside my fridge. So that way there is no mess because we don't need any extra stress on Thanksgiving morning for sure. The other thing she said is to have a schedule. So look at the re temperatures that things are, so they say to reheat them at, look at the times and really kind of make a schedule for yourself. So if you have three things that cook at 350 degrees, you can probably stick all three in the oven at the same time. But if you have one that cooks for 45 minutes and one that cooks for 30, you just kind of make yourself a schedule and you put it all in there. And you could possibly get away with, if you're planned well enough, to reheating everything in one oven if you had to. So that's the trick for that. Then the next trick, when I mentioned making people think that you slaved all day long, making everything from scratch. Most of these items come in disposable foil containers. So what you wanna do is transfer it to your own baking dish. So once it's thawed, one of the two key things to remember is to spray your uh, baking dish with nonstick cooking spray. So that way it'll be easy to take out because um, normally you butter a dish, but you know, since they've already done that work for you, you haven't done that. So then you slide it into your um, casserole dish. And one of the things you can do is you can take scissors and you can cut the aluminum foil container, like one end of it, and literally just slide it in so all the toppings stay on top. But what I like to do is add extra garnishes. So I always have extra Ritz crackers, chopped pecans, extra shredded cheese. Um, and so what I do is I just kind of elaborate to the toppings, especially like for sweet potatoes. Um, I like to add um, pecans to that because a lot of times they just come with marshmallows or add extra marshmallows because you can never have too many marshmallows at Thanksgiving on your sweet potatoes. So make it look like your own. 
And then here's the last tip that whether it's from something that you bought at a store or something that you've actually kind of pre-prepared is don't go straight from the fridge to the oven. Pull out those side dishes about an hour beforehand so it takes the chill off and that way it will cook more quickly and also more evenly. So, and it's completely food safe to do that. I mean, you don't want to take them out like five hours ahead of time, but you can take them out an hour ahead of time to set them on your counter and let that chill come off of it until um, before you put it in the oven and your side dishes will be beautiful and nobody has to know that you didn't slave all day doing that. I love so, that. I love that, that idea. Sense? Yes, yeah. I, I, those are those are great tips. Um, you know the yeah. uh, the, uh, the the towel, but uh, yeah, the the cookie sheet uh, underneath because it sweats and and yes, it it pools a little bit with the yeah. with the liquid there. And then um, I love putting it in your own dish so that you know it looks yeah. more authentic oh. that way. Many people don't realize I had a restaurant, gosh, it's now been over 20 years ago, Sheffy's Market and more, and we were a prepared foods market. And I used to always tell, I mean, I was, I let people bring their casserole dishes into me and I, you know, I would just put their stuff and I was like, nobody has to know you didn't slave all day. <laughs> it's what I do. So let's talk turkeys. So I have, we're going to talk about if you pre-bought a turkey and then we're going to talk about frying turkeys. So if you pre-bought a turkey, that's one of the things that I get a lot of questions about every year is how do you reheat this thing so that it kind of is not dried out and it's still tasty and um, people think again that you've slaved for the past five hours. So um, a couple of years ago, I sat down with Jimmy Stovall who owns Corky's um, Barbecue and um, they, I, you know, I should have asked him how many turkeys they cook every year, but they cook a lot of turkeys um, between what they sell here in Memphis and what they ship via um, QVC. So he has become an expert on reheating a turkey. And it is actually pretty simple, but it is important to follow these steps to make sure that it doesn't dry out. First thing is he says to preheat it, to preheat your oven at 325. So 325 is the magic number on your oven for reheating a pre-cooked turkey. Um, then what he does is he places it in the um, casserole um, or in his turkey, you know, your roasting pan. Um, I would suggest putting it on a rack if you have it. And underneath, you add about a cup of water. Um, and then you lightly kind of tint the um, the turkey with foil and put it in the oven. If for about a 10 to 12 pound turkey, it'll take about an hour to reheat. You kind of just, the, the magic number there is, you know, if you have a meat thermometer, you want it to be 125 degrees, that's food safe. Um, and that should be the perfect temperature so that it's warm, but it does not dry out. Um, he says the key is to keep it covered the whole time and to make sure you add that water so that kind of the water steams and adds moisture so that it doesn't dry out when you're um, reheating a turkey. And so this works with smoked turkeys or roast turkeys. If you didn't buy, if you bought a turkey somewhere and you're reheating it tomorrow, I mean, on Thursday, that's tomorrow. <laughs> um, this is what you need to do. Another Have you ever bought a turkey tip. from anyone or before? Yeah. Um, so we used to buy it um, at Corky's, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh -huh. That's where my wife worked a long, long time ago. So we did it. But now we, uh, we've done, the last several years, we've done our own turkey, and it, it tastes amazing. Well, I will tell you, we do our own turkeys, too. And I used to get up, you know, way early in the morning to put that thing in the oven so that it would, you know, to roast for five to six hours and, you know, would baste it and such. And um, a number of years ago, um, before I started writing for the commercial appeal, I used to do a lot of food styling. And Masterbuilt was one of my customers. And we did uh, several years in a row segments on um, frying turkeys in their electric fryer. And um, they gave me one. And mine is like over 10 years old. If it ever dies, I'm going to like cry. Um, and we fry a turkey every year. And it is a complete game changer because a tur fried turkey when you put it in the fryer, it is three to four minutes per pound. That's three to four minutes per pound. So if you have a 12 to 14 pound turkey, I mean, you're going to have, it's going to be less than an hour for your turkey to cook. Game changer. Plus it frees up oven space. But I have to say, frying a turkey, safety, safety, safety first, because you see all these videos around with people putting turkeys into fryers and the oil going around and all this kind of stuff. So my number one tip is get an electric fryer, whatever kind it is. You know, I, I just think it takes all of that gameplay, you know, all of the, 
I don't know. To me, when you're putting a big old pot full of hot grease and a big heavy turkey on top of a little, whim, you know, a stand like, you know, one of those fish fry stands, that just is like a disaster waiting to happen, in my opinion. So electric fire, game changer. They're not expensive. And as I said, mine is over 10 years old. It was the best $125 that we would have spent. So here are the tips for that. You have to make sure if you're frying a turkey that your turkey is completely thawed. This is key cannot be frozen at all. And what I do is the um, a couple of hours before I'm going to fry it, I run it under warm water and especially go inside the cavity to make sure there are no ice crystals anywhere left inside my turkey. Because when you're putting it into the oil, there's any moisture or ice crystals, that is gonna, what's going to make kind of pop. And that's where the danger can come with the hot oil. Also, make sure you dry your turkey thoroughly. That moisture is not good when you're frying a turkey. So I take paper towels, I dry it on the outside, I dry it on the inside, I set it on a thing of paper towel, like a layer of paper towels, and then I come back and do it a second time like 30 minutes later. Um, and again, with when you're cooking a turkey, just like with the sides, you want to pull it out, you know, about an hour or so before you're putting it into um, cooking it because, again, takes the chill off, will make it so it's more evenly, the temperature around it is more even, and so it will cook more evenly. For flavor is, um, I think with a fried turkey, a key thing is injecting it. So um, we make a Cajun butter, butter every year where I to uh, melted butter and I add my Cajun seasoning and I inject all over in my turkey. You could do garlic butter, um, you could do just plain butter, but it is important to inject it. And I also, for mine, I do a light dry rub of my Cajun seasoning on the outside of it as well, just to add a little extra flavor to the skin. But you could just do a generous serving of like, Salt and pepper if you wanted, if you didn't want that spice that you get from the Cajun seasoning. But um, injecting is key. And as I mentioned, the temperature you should do is 350 to 370 degrees. Um, if you have an electric fryer, it's very, very easy. If you're using a traditional you know, pot with hot oil, then what you want to do is um, make sure you have a meat thermometer so that you keep that heat consistent at 350 to 375 degrees. And if you're doing that, you know that if you're cooking it, three to four minutes per pound. And I have to tell you, it's just so, so good. And here's another trip that trick that I'll tell you. So when you're frying a turkey, you don't get gravy. Well, you kind of need some gravy on Thanksgiving. Don't you agree? I think I do. Yeah. Um, so what I did, and I did this last night, is um, get turkey legs, get um, turkey necks, whatever you can find. It can kind of be a little hit or miss in the grocery stores to find these extra parts. Um, I ended up, ended up getting turkey necks this year. And I found some big ones. And so I roasted them last night. I seared them and then I roasted them in the oven with some fresh herbs in, in a pan. And I took them out and then I added water to the pan and kind of deglazed it to make my gravy. Um, and so I have turkey gravy now in my fridge just waiting for me. And I actually, I have a couple of relatives that like the turkey necks. So we're actually going to take the roasted turkey necks and throw them in the fryer when we take the turkey out <laughs> on um Thursday, so there'll be a little extra there. But that's how you can get a gravy if you're making a fried, tur fried turkey. That sounds amazing. Um, I mean, step by step, Jennifer, just telling us how to fry it and how to make it taste so good. And I think we all have those relatives that love turkey necks. I, I don't get it, but <laughs> we all have those. It's not my thing either, but, um, but <laughs> yeah. my dad loves them, so, <laughs> so does my yeah, husband. I know. <laughs> There's always some. <laughs> Jennifer, that was fantastic. I, I love the tips yeah. and tricks, and um, I think everyone's going to have a, a, a really tasty Thanksgiving meal if they listen to you, the best food reporter in Memphis and the Mid South. <laughs> You're the Thanks best. So well, I will much. tell you all of these tips. If you go to, if you Google commercialappeal.com and put in fried turkey, this article I wrote a couple of years ago with my fried turkey tips will come out. If you put in um, commercial appeal reheating turkey, um, the turkey tip will still come up. And um, the side dish one story is the one I did this year, and it is on front and center on the um, food page today. So um, you can find all of these tips written down if you um, did not take notes um, and you want to go back to them. So happy Thanksgiving <laughs> awesome. and happy cooking. <laughs> yes, commercialappeal.com slash food. Jennifer Chandler, we appreciate it as always. Have a great holiday weekend. Thanks, you too.